Hi everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel. I'm Greg and this beautiful machine is the Monport 40 watt CO2 laser engraver that is light burn compatible. I think that's a really cool feature. It's one of the main reasons why I got this machine. Follow along as I get this machine set up for its very first project. There's just four simple things to do. Welcome back. The four things I'll be doing to set this machine up for its first project is to connect the exhaust hose and pipe that outside, followed by setting up the cooling system on the machine, followed by checking the mirror alignment, and then finally the most exciting part is connecting the machine to Lightburn software. Before I start all of that, I do want to mention that it is important to go through the user manual that comes with the machine and familiarize yourself with the basic functions of the machine and how the parts work together. The first thing I'll be setting up on the machine is running the exhaust hose outside of the studio here. The machine does come with about five feet of this shiny aluminum exhaust tubing. And in my shop, I was fortunate enough that the previous owner did have a dog kennel off to this side. I since took the dog kennel out, but I left the doggy door in and I was able to cut a hole in that door and then run all of my exhausting out that door. Some of you might have your machine located by a window. I know that a number of users will open that window and take a board that fills up the spot of that open window and then they'll run their exhaust hose through the hole in the board that they just placed in the window. But again, the main thing is just to get the end of that hose somewhere outside of your workspace. The second step in setting up this machine is to set up the cooling system. This machine does use water to keep the laser tube cool and from overheating. And the water that I use, and this is specified in the manual, is to use distilled water. So I have three gallons of distilled water in a clean, brand new bucket, and the manual is very specific. It does have to be distilled water. It can't be purified water, and it can't be filtered water. And the reasoning is distilled water does not conduct electricity very well at all. It's actually a very good insulator. If you start using tap water or regular bottled water, that will have minerals in it. And in a few days, weeks, or even months, you'll see failure in your CO2 laser tube due to arcing through the water that's the cooling system. And we just don't want to do that. And these gallons of water cost about $1.50, I think. So it's good insurance to make sure that the machine stays cool and we don't run into electrical problems with the high voltage going through the laser tube. I'm going to show you a quick shot of how I have the hoses ran on my machine. So I'm going to start out by the pump. So the pump is pumping water into this line. If I follow this line up to the machine, that is going to go to the inlet. And that inlet, if I follow that through the machine, starts at this far left-hand side of the machine where the red power wire is connected up to the CO2 laser tube. That water will then travel through the laser tube and then come out on this bottom section and it'll go through the cabinet and it'll come out this outlet. And right now I have that just running into a bucket just to keep the line separated so it's easier to see. This line does go back into the reservoir and I keep this bucket underneath my work table right in this spot here. And I have a blue heating pad down here because I am located in a very cold climate and it does get sub-zero temperatures quite often. I'm using a special heating pad and I'll see if I can't put a link to that in the description down below. This heating pad is special because it has just a regular mechanical switch for the three different heat settings on it. And once it turns on, it stays on. If you go to uh, any of your, your drug stores or a Walmart and you pick up just a regular heating pad, those heating pads have a built-in timer and they will turn off af after uh, three hours or six hours. The heating pad that I have is special that once you turn it on, it stays on. 
I did purchase my bucket with the cover. I like to loosely have this cover over the bucket to keep anything from dropping down into the, the water and contaminating it. And it also cuts down on evaporation. I like to set up the water in the second step to make sure that water circulating through the laser tube and to check for any leaks. If you were to have water leaks, the common spots are anytime there's a fitting with the silicone tubing at either end of the laser tube. It's been a few minutes. I've been watching all of the water connections on the CO2 laser tube along with underneath the machine and I don't see any water. So this all looks good. Pretty straightforward step. Again, the key being making sure to use that distilled water. Step three is checking the mirror alignment on the machine. This is an important step to make sure that the mirrors are all properly aligned so that throughout the entire work area, our laser is working as effectively as possible. And for this step, we'll need just a couple supplies. I'll start out with the safety glasses that come with the machine and some blue painter's tape. You'll see that I have the laser cabinet cover removed and the work bed cover removed. I have this just for the video so that you can see what's going on. I do encourage you to keep all of your guards in place. While we're doing this mirror alignment because we are firing the laser, I do want to make sure that the water pump is running and everything in that cooling system is running properly. That's why I did that in the previous step. So we'll start out by turning the machine power on and we'll see that nothing is happening. And that is because the e-stop button is pressed and that cuts power to the entire machine. If I twist that to reset that, we'll see that we do have the accessory light comes on. I can hear the exhaust fan coming on and I do have lights coming up on the display. Speaking of the display, let's take a closer look. The main thing on the display that I want to direct your attention towards is this smaller display here. And this is from the power supply that runs the voltage out to the laser tube to make it fire the laser. There's a turn dial on here and this is for manually firing the laser. And I'm going to turn this at about the nine o'clock position. And then there's this uh, kind of yellow orange colored test button. When I press that, it will fire the laser. Now. Please note that you can have this workspace door open and this test fire button will still fire the laser. So be very, very careful. This is a laser beam that you cannot see with your naked eye. And I've seen other people uh, get a little bit careless with this and actually swipe their hand through the laser beam. It does leave a mark. And from what they've told me, it really does hurt. To check the mirror alignment, we familiarize ourselves with the laser path and the laser goes through the laser tube. It bounces off the first mirror, then to the second mirror, and then into the mirror into the laser head where it goes through a lens that focuses down to the tabletop. The idea behind checking the mirror alignment is to check the alignment with all the mirrors as close to the laser tube as possible, and then to check the alignment as far away as possible. And the way that I'll be accomplishing this is I cut a small square of the blue painter's tape and I'm going to put this over the access hole on the laser head. And I'm going to move all the mirrors as close to the laser tube as possible. And with my safety glasses on, I'm ready to start. And I just want to make sure that this adjustment dial is fairly low and I just want to kind of tap that test button. I don't need to burn a hole all the way through that tape. I just need to mark it. There, and I've got a mark on that tape and I'm going to move it to the point furthest away from the laser tube and do the same thing. And I can see that in both positions, that laser mark on the tape went through the same spot. So all the mirrors on here are perfectly aligned. This is the method that I use to just check the mirror alignment. I know there's lots of different ways to do this. I encourage you to use the method that works best for you. This is just the quickest way to check if they need to be aligned and not the full 
checking each of the mirrors. I'm going to do that in a whole separate video where I actually put the mirrors out of alignment and show you each step where we check each of the mirrors and go through it very systematically to make sure there is proper and precise alignment. The alignment looks great on this machine. And this is also one of the benefits of having a smaller work bed area is if the mirrors are off just a little bit, because everything is still relatively close to the laser tube, one of these mirrors can be off a little bit and you may not notice it once it gets out to the laser head. Now, if I had a machine that uh, was 24 inches by 36 inches, this huge work bed area, as you get further and further out, a mirror that's aligned a little bit is really gonna show up once you start getting several feet away. So really neat way to start out with CO2 lasers and this small work bed really works to the advantage of keeping the mirrors aligned. In this step four, the last step in getting the machine ready for its first project is of course, connecting it up to Lightburn software. Join me as I hop in Lightburn. Here's my opening screen. And when I pull this menu down, you'll see that I have a number of other machines that I have connected up to Lightburn. And you'll see that the X tool is trying to connect already to a machine on COM port six. If I try going into devices and find my laser to find the mon port, it will not find it. So I need to back out of this. What I need to do is come over in this COM port area and drop that menu down and switch it over to choose. And that will effectively tell Lightburn to stop trying to connect to a machine it thinks is out there. I'm now ready to click on devices and find my laser. And after a quick second, it pops up the Mon port machine. I'll add device and I'm going to label this Mon port, whoop, Mon port 40. And the area of origin for the laser and what that needs to be, I'll flip the cover open. We want this back corner where the homing limit switches are and that is going to be the left rear spot. I'll select that and I'm going to deselect auto home laser on startup. That's just something that's my personal preference. This all looks good. I can click finish and okay. And now I can go back over to my machine selection area, select the Mon port 40. For the moment of truth, I'm going to hit the home button in Lightburn and the machine is homing. This took just a couple minutes to get the machine connected to Lightburn software. It's already controlling the machine. This is what I love about Lightburn software. Lightburn software has three different versions. And the honest question is, what version do I need? The controller board in this machine that makes it Lightburn compatible is the same version of Lightburn software that's compatible with the bulk of the tabletop laser diode machines, which also happens to be the least expensive version of Lightburn. So that's the four basic steps of getting this machine set up for its first project. I think there's enough time left over in this video that I'll do my first mini project on here. I'm gonna show you what that looks like in Lightburn and then I'll go ahead and make that. Should only take about a minute or two. Back in Lightburn, I made this simple little design, the laser channel. And if I zoom in a little bit more, you can see this lime green outline. So I am going to engrave the laser channel and then cut out this green thing. So I should have like a little plaque, the laser channel when I'm all done. And here's the settings for the fill. I'm using a speed of 200 millimeters per second at a power level of 20%. And I do have the cross hatch on and I do have overscan turned on. On this other one, everything is straightforward. I am doing two passes to make sure that everything cuts cleanly out. I found having the laser move faster at a lower power level 
and doing multiple passes produces less char on the cutout pieces. Before I hit the start button, I do want to go back to the display and from when we were test firing the laser for the mirror alignment, I do want to turn this dial all the way up. And my pre-checks before hitting the start button is I do have the exhaust fan on, I do have the water pump running, I did frame out the project to make sure that the laser head would be over the work material. With those things covered, I'm ready to hit the start button. And here's the first project off of the machine. How cool is that? That cut out very clean. There's only the tiniest little bit of charring on the edges there, but nothing that rubs off on my finger. And it's a very nice clean cutout. You saw at the very end of that cutout that the piece just dropped out. This was a great video showing the setup of the Monport 40 watt laser, everything is pretty straightforward. I hope that if you're looking at this machine, you can feel confident in purchasing this and setting up the machine and getting it to make projects right away. If you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel or ring that notification bell. Doing any number of those things really helps this channel out and connects content like this with viewers like you. Speaking of content, other videos coming up in this series will include doing the full mirror alignment on here, checking each of the mirrors for proper and precise alignment for perfect projects. And I'll also be covering the maintenance of the machine, both the weekly and the monthly maintenance things on here to keep this running in tip top shape. Until next time, learn, create, and share.